is a big day, uh, really, really important for me. It's November 29th, which is my wife's due date. We've been waiting very impatiently, hoping the baby would come early, and I got today and tomorrow left for the first split of duck season, then it closes for three weeks. So, we've been kind of torn, and I talked to her last night about it, and told her I didn't want to leave and, you know, risk missing him, and she told me how to go. And I decided to go so we're gonna go out um, yesterday I hunted with Toby and Ayla and uh, we set up on this big north-south slough and we're pretty much on the far south end of it to be close to the water source and uh, you know the open water down there but the majority of the ducks we saw yesterday were flying off the north end of the slough so uh, I'm kind of thinking, I'm torn. We were supposed to have a big north wind, uh, and I'm torn between flying uh, or, or walking out and setting up some random place, trying to hunt something new down and trying to get under the flight path, uh, or just going back to the slough since it's only one person. And I feel like with one person, I got as good a shot at shooting five mallards there as I do anywhere. So I don't know, I'm gonna think about it here for the next couple hours and get a game plan together. Uh, when we pull in, I'll, I'll let you know what I decided to do, but, and I'm, I'm just praying that Little Forest doesn't come quite right on time. Also, here's the kicker. I spent about 30 minutes this morning dickering with my battery. I just put a brand new battery in the truck came out started up it was dead dead this morning so a little concerned about that but it's duck season you just got to keep going well the more I think about it as I'm driving out here um, first off I'm concerned that the ditch that feeds that uh, slough that I'm, I'm looking at going and checking out uh, it hasn't had water in it for a while so I'm concerned that I'm gonna go that way and then my only plan B would be the river and the river right now is so low it's not a plan it's not an option so um, that makes it pretty tough and it's got me leaning towards trying to go back to the same spot we were on the slough yesterday uh, we got the exact opposite wind I got a feeling we're gonna see a different number of birds today we I mean Lila and I um, I just uh, I just feel like that's the best bet also thanks to my battery and thanks to trying to sleep in just a little bit and getting some sleep uh, I got about an hour left in my drive and I was arriving 10 minutes from now yesterday so there's always a chance that someone's gonna be out there now it's doubtful I think I've seen evidence of one other occasion where people might have been hunting there uh, it's just a spot that's really tucked away and it's kind of a pain to get to and uh, I just don't see people being back there but you never know so uh, at least there my plan B would be to try to get to that slough uh, if someone's there then I've got another little ditch that runs by there where I ought to be able to set up even a smaller spread and uh, probably pull a few ducks. I've always wanted to hunt it. It's about, I don't know, maybe twice as wide as the truck or, or about as wide as the truck is long. So uh, if they came in, it would be a pretty sweet deal. So we'll see what it looks like when we get out there, but I feel like it, uh, I feel like it's gonna pan out. After all, I only need five mallards. And that's one of the joys of, uh, you know, going out and doing this solo hunting and, and the public land stuff is, you know, you may not have a banger, you may not have a, you know, a flatland flyways 75,000 mallard feed to go and hunt with, you know, you and 17 of your closest friends, but you don't even need anything remotely close to that to have a good time. I mean, all I would need to shoot for a limit would be five mallards. Uh, you know, if I get a bonus duck, great, grand, wonderful. But, um, you know, this is just one of those things that is awesome because you don't have to have a high concentration of ducks. We had three groups come in yesterday, 
and uh, really two groups and then one one group of four greenheads didn't come in and check us out so uh, you know if I get that group of four in kill two out of that get the you know get another group of three in that's got two drakes kill two out of that a single I'm set and with it being just myself I'm not waiting to call a shot for you know Ayla who's never been duck hunting before and who hasn't uh, you know we were trying to get her first duck so uh, the circumstances changed quite a bit and I'm really excited about getting to go and you know just kind of hunt myself take Lila we're gonna go have a nice morning and not a care in the world other than my truck starting if that phone rings to say that I got a baby on the way so we'll see but uh, I'm gonna go out there don't know how many people are gonna be in the parking lot but I am gonna give it hell and I uh, I really do feel good I think it's gonna pan out well just got here and somehow I am the only one here I guess that's probably indicative of the number of ducks I've been seeing out here but um, you know it, it's kind of nice I was worried and typical nervous feeling but amplified by 10 because I knew I wasn't getting out here at the earliest time possible and uh, it's kind of nice. Now I get to just go out, take my time, set up where I was planning on setting up, and we'll see how it goes. I think uh, I think it's I think it's going to work out. I've got faith, but uh, I'm probably going to walk around a little bit in the middle of the day and see if I can't uh, you know look for a new spot if those ducks are still working to the north of me. But we'll see. I got enough decoys to haul out there. The uh, the same numbers I took out yesterday with three people. I'm taking out by myself today. So uh, thank God for game carts. And it's going to take me a little while. I'm going to have to triple trip it um, from where I got to leave the cart so we'll see hopefully it goes well but uh, I don't know Two minutes into shooting light, already had a nice little group come in, two drakes in the hand, killed one of the drakes and the other one got off, but uh, man they came in here just perfect. Um, I got a nice big wad right at the top of the hole, on the upwind side and then I got them strung out down here to the downwind side. That way they don't have to come land past me if they don't want to. But these pitch right in. I mean, really couldn't have gone any better. So I hope we get a lot more like that. It's a good start, though. Anytime you can get a couple early, it goes a long way. So out here by myself today, especially with no one else around to where I'm not disturbing other folks, I'm doing what my brother John David taught me to do, and that's trolling for ducks. So I'm just sitting out here, every 30 seconds or so I'll let off a, a hen or two or a couple quacks and just be blowing the call, especially because I'm in an area with all these cottonwoods that I can't see real well. I mean, it's not as tight as flooded timber. Um, you know, I got a, a couple nice alleys where I can see birds, but... Um, you know, I'm, I'm really somewhat limited on the visibility, so I'm trying to let them know I'm here, and again, don't do this when you've got a, a whole bunch of people around you, uh, and you're going to be making people look for birds, or, you know, pe people might think you're actively working birds, when in reality you're just pulling a duck call. Um, so, try not to get too carried away with it, but uh, it sure can help sometimes when you can't see them. Holy cow, I was sitting here and I was trolling 
and I hope I got some of that on video because I just had 50 mallards come right in. We got some more coming back. I think those have had enough. Oh, God, that was awesome. Holy cow. I'm sitting here and I saw one green head and I started working them. And uh, my goodness, the whole wad came. And then this this uh, group comes, sits right in. And the, the only duck that I can, the only drake I pick out is the only one around. And uh, nothing but hands around them. So my uh, I didn't even fire a second or third shot, which was a shame because that was a good group of ducks. But oh my God, that was awesome. Whew, get some more of it. Another thing I want to talk about is cut down duck calls. Now, while these, like this old uh, D2 Olt, um, you know, they're, they're typically found. You see guys mostly hunting them down in Arkansas, down in the flooded timber, because of the way they, they echo. Uh, they sound kind of weird up close, but um, when you get 50 or 100 yards back and you hear the echo off the trees, it sounds so good. And they just bark. And it's a nice, deep, commanding tone. Um, and and they're, they're awesome. Now, while I'm a long, long way from Arkansas, this old cut down is making itself at home on this cottonwood slough. And it echoes in here and sounds great. And I was sitting there trolling on that when that big group of mallards broke. And, I mean, honestly, it, it, it's just like Arkansas. You know, you're walking around, trolling, you know, um, just walking through the woods in the middle of the morning looking for a hole or something, blowing a duck call. <clears throat> All of a sudden, you just, you know, either see them bowed up looking like green-headed footballs or, uh, you know, you hear that wind on their wings and come down. It's just absolutely awesome. And, uh give a lot of credit to that thing right there it's probably 60 70 years old but it's still getting the job done So you can see the nice 8 to 10 mile an hour wind I had has pretty much died. And while I think I can get away with it in the dark, now that it's starting to get light, I really don't like it. So I am going to go out there, I'm going to set a dirt string up, uh, just going to throw it right onto some of the F1s. And uh, you know, usually I have some real big heavy feeder butts, but uh, I didn't feel like carrying those out by myself today. So. Um, I'm going to go strap it on some of these F1s and see how they do. Boo-hoo, baby. They are doing it just perfect. I went out to put that jerk string on. Get out right in the middle, of course, in the really deep stuff. And I'm trying to hook a decoy up. A group of geese flies over and they got five ducks with them. Lila, heel. Heel. Back. So... There are five ducks with them, and they broke one pass. They were down to about 60, so I tucked up against the bank. Rule number one, always have your gun. Always, 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 always have your gun. So I stuck my gun up here on the bank. I got down, uh, was able to get to the shore just in time, and they came right down. I think I got that one recorded on the shot cam, um, but had a nice clean little triple there. So I'm going to stay around, see if I can't get a little bit of footage, maybe find a bonus duck, but that's my greenheads. So let's uh, let's see what the rest of the morning brings. <laughs> Good girl, Lila. Good girl. <clears throat> Lila, heel. Come on. That's a dandy green head. Heel. Good 
Come on. Good girl. Good girl. There she is. One, two, three, four, five. Nice green tops. Beautiful colors on them. I mean, I, I just don't know how you can beat a nice Drake Mallard. Come out here by myself, set up, put into work, and have it pay off like that. I mean, that's. That's what it's all about. That's why we do this grind. That's why we wake up early in the morning and, you know, mess with the truck battery. And I guess in my case, I even kind of, uh, kind of risk missing my kid get born. So I think uh, I'll hang out here for just a little bit since there's no shot my wife's even awake yet. But um, I'll hang out for a little bit, see if I can't find a pintail or a dead wall or something to take home and polish off a nice round limit. But how do you beat it? That's what it's all about. Come out here, trolling with the cut down, finding ducks, breaking them, working them right in tight. As soon as they're coming in, I'm, I'm really laying back on the calls, letting the decoys and the spot do the work. Um, once they see ducks in a place like this, I mean, tell me that doesn't look ducky. And they don't come in here and sit here very often, but you want to talk about a place to run traffic. Oh, buddy, love it. So I got this jerk string set up, got the cord tied up all the way up here, and it's amazing what just a couple decoys moving can do for the whole spread. This is one of the most special places I hunt, and uh, you know, not just just because I I like it, and it's because it's a you know a cool spot. But um, guy who's my brother, John David Stanley, uh, he and I found this thing a long time ago, just stumbling around, and weren't many ducks sitting on it. But you know, like I said before, it just looked like a really ducky place and a place you could traffic some birds and and make them do some cool stuff. And uh, he and I came out here and you know, we had a few good mornings, nothing too crazy, but you know, really enjoyable mornings. And you know, I've talked about how much it means to get back to your roots and do stuff you grew up doing. And uh, and I, I just I just find myself sitting here thinking about you know John David, uh, one of my best friends, TJ, another brother of mine, Zach Laborde. I mean, there's only a handful of people that I've I've hunted this with, and I would. You know, I would give anything to, to have them here right now, but I am so grateful to be out here just enjoying a day like today. Absolutely awesome.
nice limit of mallards this morning. Had a great time. Lila secured her position as world's best girl. Yeah, she's the best girl ever. Yes, you are. I think we got another five ducks to go or five birds to go until 10,000 retrieves. All picked up. Ready to bag it up. Call it a day. What do you say, girl? Yeah, yeah, those are the green beans. We like those. That's a heck of a lot nicer view than it was on the way in here. A few mallards leading the way. Hiking back to the truck. It's taking me about an hour and 10 minutes to get to this point. So it takes a while when you're on your own, but I'll tell you what, I'll watch those ducks do it every day and call it worth it. Now I get to uh, drive home, got about I don't know, a couple hours or so on the way home and get to kind of sit back and reflect on that. But man, that was that was just awesome. You know, with Lila being so close to 10,000 birds, you know, the way they worked, I mean, it was just, it just couldn't have been any better. You know, I mean, frankly, I, I just, it just doesn't get any better than that for me. You know, hunting in a place that's so special, that brings back so many memories. That's what it's all about. So, you know, for those of you out there who are hesitant to go try public land hunting because you're worried about the quality, trust me, you won't be disappointed. Go make memories, go live this lifestyle and soak up every second of it because there's no such thing as getting enough. That's just the, the best times I've ever had in my life have been, you know, hunting public land with close friends and family. turned the uh, radio to the Broncos game a little pregame action here but uh, man I, I think way back to when I was a kid I mean 10 years old nine years old maybe uh, I'd come out and tag along with dad he'd let me carry a BB gun uh, you know we'd, we'd walk around and try to try to find a place shoot a duck or two or maybe a pheasant but uh, <laughs> Man, I mean, I have been driving these roads out here, just listening to the Broncos game like today and, and checking things out for so many years, it's hard to believe. You know, it's it's hard to, hard to imagine I'm 30 years old now and it's been, you know, 20 plus years I've been doing this. Loved every second, you know, I thank God for it every day. This is one of the best lives I could have ever dreamt of living. And really, it's just, it just as good as it gets, you know. I can't wait. Uh, hopefully my son's born today. We'll see. Um, if not today, sometime in the next few days, I'm sure. Uh, but I can't wait to look back on making fond memories one day when I'm old and decrepit, can't walk anymore. And, you know, I, I've been dragging my son out here and doing stuff like this. It would just be absolutely amazing. I can't wait.